So last time uh, we talked about power sets and partitions. So this time today we are going to discuss sequences. and sums. For us, a sequence is a function f from a subset of integers to real numbers. Okay, and um, so let's take one such subset. Let's take all the natural, uh, or let's say just take the positive integers so from one to and so on, and take a function f that takes a value in r. So, and this is the only condition for being a sequence. So how do we view this, this function as a sequence as we understand in English? So we list all the values of this function. So what value takes at 1, then what value takes at 2, what value takes at 3, and so on and so forth. And for the purpose of viewing this as a function, as a sequence, uh, we denote these array of numbers by using a subscript. So f sub 1, f sub 2, and f sub 3. So this is, for us, is the definition of a sequence. One may uh, say that we haven't rigorously defined what a function is but we will come to that later i we, uh, we we are assuming that there is a common understanding of what the fun what a function is so now we have a definition the first thing we want to do is look at an example so let's take our one of our favorite functions so let's say my function f be the function that squares each integer r and let's say it's coming from positive integers so this is a function defined as taking any input x and squaring it so we want to uh, write that as a sequence so if i start from the positive integer the first positive integer is one so the first term in my sequence is one now the second positive integer is two and then the second term in my sequence is not two but the square of two because my function squares each term so it would be four and then nine and sixteen and so on okay. Notice that the subset here in this example we chose was the positive integers. You can you can make another sequence where you take the subset to be negative integers or so on and so forth. Whenever this subset is infinite, which in our example is, then this we call the sequence. fi or let's see write that sequence down uh, sequence f is an infinite sequence or we call when when s is infinite then we call the sequence infinite And when s is finite, we call the sequence finite. Okay, so let's look at some common examples of sequences. 
the first example is a silly one which is constant sequences they come from constant function an example would be so if a, i have a constant function which mean uh, each term has the same value so a uh, example would be if my function is taking the value 1 at each um, domain value at each input value so this means this this defines a constant sequence another constant sequence would be 0 0 0 or pi 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 so there are many examples you can cook up of constant sequences another example is of geometric sequences These are sequences where the ratio of two consecutive term of any pair of consecutive term is a constant. And let's denote that constant by r. So this means if let's say in general, so let's first I will write down the general constant a geometric sequence. So if the first term is a and let's say the constant is r, this means the next the ratio of a with the next term is r. So the next term has to be a r so that a r over a is equals to r. So here I'm assuming that a is not equals to zero. So that I can so that none of the term have should be zero because I'm taking ratios. Otherwise the ratio is not defined. And similarly, the next term has to be a r square because the ratio is not fixed, which is r. So the, every time I have a term, I would get the next term by multiplying that term with r a r cube and so on depending on whether the my sequence is finite or infinite this will see this series this sequence will stop or will go on forever and let's look at one example where a is equals to 1 and r equals to 2 then what i have is the sequence one one times two two one times two square is four one times two cube is eight and so on so this is an example of a geometric sequence okay. let's look at another example uh, of commonly occurring sequences which is arithmetic sequence So arithmetic sequences are sequences where rather than the ratio of consecutive terms, it's the difference of any pair of consecutive terms with a constant. And let me denote this constant for arithmetic sequence by d. Now again, let's look at a general example. Let's say the first term of our arithmetic sequence is a. Then the next term, because the difference has to be d, so I should add d. So that the difference of the consecutive terms is d 
Now, the, once I have the second term, how do I get the third term? Again, since I we have fixed the difference to be d, the next term would be a plus d plus d, which is a plus 2d. And so on and so forth. And it, depending on whether I'm taking a finite sequence or infinite sequence, this sequence will terminate at some step or it will go on forever. And let's look at an example where we fix a and d. So if a is equals to say zero and or a let a be one and d equals to um, one also, then what do I have? Then the sequence, the first term would be one, the second term would be one plus one, which is two. The third term would again I have to add this the difference the difference was 1 so 3 4 and so on and again depending on whether my sequence is finite or infinite this will terminate or will go on forever so now we have uh, this um, and in one more comment on this that they we can write a formula for the function corresponding to these sequences for example for the case of the geometric sequence I can write f uh, n the function at the n step would take the value a times r to the n minus 1 right if I'm taking f from uh, z positive to real numbers okay so at 1 you can see the function is a which is the first term of my sequence at n equals to 2 the function value is a times r which is precisely the second term in my sequence and so on and for arithmetic sequence I can do same thing I can write my function as f of n to be a but in this times rather than being multiplied by r actually we are adding d to that term so it's n minus 1 times d okay and you can again check that this indeed gives me this sequence this arithmetic sequence that i have now we have that i mean you can cook up your favorite examples of sequences they don't have to come from a function that looks like have a formula you can have a sequence that have 1 pi e square root of 2 and so on this may not have a formula but it still has is a function so this is still a valid sequence okay so moving on and now we will talk about sums in particular we will talk about sums of sequences but before we talk about that we have to develop a um, certain notation to denote uh, sums because it will get hectic if we do not have a shorthand notation so what we are ideally want to do is we have a sequence let's say a n term sequence with terms a1 a2 up till a n and we want to take its sum and this sum would be a1 plus a2 plus up till a n the notation we are going to use for denoting this sum would be using this sigma symbol and writing a i where i goes from 1 to n okay so for example if i would have written down a i where i goes from 2 to 3 2 to 5 let's say then these will can this sum by expanding this out I would be writing a i when i equals to 2 which mean a 2 
then we I have to enumerate all the indices from 2 to 5 so I have to have a3 next and then a4 and then including the fifth index the index where i equals to 5 so and then i have to sum all these terms okay. so this is the notation we are going to use to denote the sum of a sequence okay so now let's go back and see the sum or look at the sequences that we had before and try to compute their sum so the first example we had was a constant sequence and we want to write the sum of a constant sequence so if I have a constant sequence let's say my sequence is given by the function that takes the value at any positive integer n it takes the value a so my sequence looks like a a a and so on but since it's and let's say a is a positive or actually it's bigger than one and then you can see that so this sum of a's would not be a finite num a number a real number in general so we are going to take nth term and compute the sum of the nth term up till the nth term so let's say i have up till a n up till so n terms and i want to compute this sum so how do i write this sum sum of a i's i goes from sorry f i my function is f so f i i goes from 1 to n but since all of them are equals to a so i will write a i goes from 1 to n so if i add a so n many a's what do i get so for example if i add two a's i get two times a if i get three a's i get three times a it's just the principle of i mean it's the meaning of what does it mean to have three times a so so this would be n times a because i'm adding n terms the second example that we, I, I did was of geometric sequences And again, by the same, um, or actually, in right now, we are only going to sum finitely many terms in a geometric sequence. So, recall my geometric sequence uh, a general geometric sequence looks like this a, a times r, a times r square, a times r to the n minus 1. This would be the nth term. And now I have to take the sum. So I would be taking sum of a r n minus 1. Sorry, i minus 1. i goes from 1 to n. So I need to get a formula of this sum. So rather than first writing this as a summation notation, let me try to see what I get if I expand this out. So this would be a plus a r plus a r square up till a r n minus 1 and let's call this sum to be g to denote that it's a geometric sum now you can now we can do some algebraic manipulation i can take a common and i'm left with 1 plus r plus r square up till r to the n minus 1 right and I would get so if a is not equals to 0 then I get g over a equals to 1 plus r plus r square up till r to the n minus 1 and since it depends on uh, so 
let me multiply this whole by r so i get g over a times r equals to r plus r squared plus r cube up till r to the n so there would be r to the n minus 1 here and then plus r to the n and now let me add 1 to both sides But now you can see that this term here is equals to this. So using that, I can write 1 plus g a times r equals to g over a plus r to the n. And now I would try to solve for g because that's what I am want i want to find a formula for the geometric sum g if you manipulate this further and solve for g what you will get is g equals to a 1 minus r to the n over or r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1 okay and we already assume okay um so here we are assuming a is not equals to 0 and r is also not equals to 1 because if r is equals to 1 I go back to the constant sequence so that is not a problem the problem when r is equals to 1 is already being solved before so we get a formula for geometric sum. Now let's talk about arithmetic sum. Okay. So I want to compute for arithmetic sequence. I want to compute the sum of the first n terms and let's recall that the, if the first term is a and the difference is d then the sequence the nth term would be a plus n minus 1 times d and let's look at the sum of all these so a plus a plus d plus a plus n minus 1 times d so how many a's do I have? You can see that I have n a's because there are n terms. And then I have d plus 2d up till n minus 1d. I can again take d common. I'm left with, let me call the sequence a. I'm left with n a plus d times 1 plus 2 up till n minus so this you might know already that this sum is just n times n minus 1 over A quick way to show this so let's call this sum s so s is 1 plus 2 or I can say 0 plus 1 plus 2 up till n minus 1 or I can also write s in the reverse order so I will start with n minus 1 plus n minus 2 up till 1. 
and then I sum though these two equations I get 2s equals to n minus 1 plus 1 is n n minus 2 plus 2 is n up till n minus 1 plus 1 is n and how many n's are there these are so there are n minus 1 terms in each of the sum above so these are n minus 1 n's so 2s is this which means s is equals to n times n minus 1 over 2 which give us the formula that a is equals to n a plus t times n times n minus 1 over 2 okay. so now we have seen what um, geometric sequences are what arithmetic sequence are and what are the sums what are the formulas for the sums of finite arithmetic sequences and finite geometric sequences these are the derivations but you should not uh, take them as rigorous proof because we will show rigorously these two formulas using induction which will come further in the course thanks